We at Android Authority, you know, we're really focused on mobile technology, on the future of technology. Talking to your colleague Andrew before about battery breakthrough, 6,000 cycles before it starts to degrade. So we're looking at the Bolt here. Now this is a completely electric vehicle. 100%. Can we talk? Can you just t tell us a little bit more about it, about the range, maybe the price point, kind of where you? Absolutely. Guys are um, we're going to be at least a 200 mile range vehicle. Okay. We're going to offer this vehicle with the current incentives. It would be approximately thirty thousand dollars. So it's well within the price range of mo the majority of customers. Yep. And most importantly, from a packaging perspective, it is a small car, but you get inside of it, and the spaciousness is just phenomenal. It's yep. amazing the size of vehicle that you've gotten in. Obviously, this is our concept vehicle. You know, there are some differences. However, I will tell you that the overall spaciousness and the feel of the actual production car is very similar. So it's pretty exciting. Um, and one of the things that's most exciting that we can't talk about yet, but I guarantee you, you and I will be talking about, is the level of connectivity that this car is going to bring. It's going to step up. You know, I think General Motors does a very good job and, and is a leader within that space. But when this car comes out, I think uh, I think your socks will be taken right off your body. It's a pretty. I want to have my socks taken off. It's pretty impressive. I mean, you know, the, the, our generation, you know, and I'm starting to get a little bit older now, but the, the younger demographics simply aren't buying vehicles. You know, everyone has a mobile lifestyle, living in the city. You know, it's a hassle to have a big car. Cars have been, you know, an enormous financial responsibility. But I mean, everyone has a supercomputer in their pocket. So can you just give us a little bit of a glimpse into what is your guys' thinking around the integration with mobile and, you know? So there's, there's a lot of things that we will be talking about relative to the urban mobility that you just mentioned. This mm -hmm. car is going to bring in some features that have never been done before mm -hmm. and relative to the connectivity. I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. I use my phone. I live and die by my phone. <laughs> I'd like my phone to just basically be right part of my car when I get yeah. into it and have that happen instantly. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know when we get into production and we can get you guys into the vehicle, you're going to see that level of expectation that I would expect and that I would hope your readers would expect mm -hmm. to just fall right in line with exactly like, hey, why, why hasn't this always been this way? Because yeah. it's that easy yeah, yeah. and it's the way it should work, right? Um, it's great when you pick up new, new phone technology and something happens and it's just completely intuitive and automatic. Yeah. And that's how we're making this car. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay? I don't know if we can go and talk about that just yet. Pretty much going to happen, though. It's a cool feature. Yeah. Something I've been thinking about, which is the weaknesses of Android Auto. You know, it's kind of harmonized across all the manufacturers, and you guys are obviously taking a deep plunge, but it's a really, it's the initial stages. I think back to the first version of Windows, or you know, first version of Android, or even the first version of iOS, and how far they've come in terms of improving Absolutely. the usability. So, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of really great integrations in the future. And, yeah, I do, and it's and you know in the past, to be quite honest with you, and it's not something that probably um, you know your audience understands. But when working with the automotive companies, yeah. we have a certain timeline of developing vehicles, mm -hmm. and a phone development is a significantly shorter development timeline, right? So to take that timeline and think it can just immediately apply into <laughs> a car, it's incredibly difficult, right? Yeah. We have regulations, and there's a lot of validation and time that has to be spent with I it. Um, and you know we've been working a lot with the different, um, you know, with Android, with Apple, mm -hmm. trying to get ourselves aligned on how to make this happen. And we've yeah. made some massive steps mm -hmm. that is going to allow us to be able to better adapt, you know, their six-month development timeline to be able to take that into our car quickly, right? Mm -hmm. um, so those are the type of things where uh, I think this car is going to really start to to really move the needle because we're really well aligned now with those companies. Absolutely, and I have to applaud you. You know, 14 different vehicles with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay enabled that you guys are going to roll out this year. So that's the biggest rollout that we've seen yet. Um, there's no other manufacturer that compares. Yeah, we want to be the leaders in connectivity. Yeah. We understand, you know, personally I understand it in our company and our senior leadership. Mm -hmm. They understand how important that is and how easy it makes your car life. Yeah. It, it just effectively makes it, you know, easy. And that's yeah. what we want to make it do, effortless. Absolutely. So what's the weight of this car and what are the size of the batteries, the weight of the batteries relative to the overall weight of the vehicle? So the battery is a significant mass yeah. um, of the vehicle. We're to not going to talk about specifics around the battery or okay. where it's located. Okay. Um, <laughs> obviously, it's a 200-mile car, so it is a significant size battery. Yeah. Um, you can infer on where it potentially lies. <laughs> um, and if you could choose one, the Volt or the Bolt, the Usain Bolt EV. Bolt EV. Um, would you, which one would you choose? Which one do you think is a better fit for people? Well, it depends on your lifestyle, right? I can tell you from 
for myself. Um, I have two kids. I have a Newfoundland and a little dog. Um, so the Volt wouldn't be the right car for myself, but yeah. this car would be a perfect car for him. In terms of real world application, if I wanted to drive and go see my grandma, could I bring a power cable and everything and kind of just latch up? Yeah, absolutely. Power? Yeah. I mean, you can bring the 120 charge cord. You can stop at a DC fast charger. Yeah. Um, you know, the U.S. is continuing to increase its level of charging yeah. and infrastructure, and, mm -hmm. and we work hard. We work hard with the government. We work hard with other OEMs sure. to continue to build that infrastructure. How long would it take to charge this vehicle on a home connection? Um, we're not going to get into charge times okay. just yet. Okay. Obviously, we're still doing a lot of development <laughs> to make that better um, and make it faster. Yeah. But I, I feel very confident in saying, you know, Pam alluded to it earlier, mm. 40 or eight, more than 80% of the drives yeah. in the current Gen Volt yeah. are done on EV only. Yeah. And that car had 40 mi less than 40 miles range. Mm -hmm. I expect that to be over 90% yeah. with the 50 mile Sounds range realistic. Chevy Volt. Absolutely. Cool. So then when you step into a car like this, how often are you going to actually deplete the 200 mile range? Yeah. Well, it depends on the customer, but it's a pretty easy fill, especially yeah. overnight. Absolutely. Well, I got to applaud you guys for your leadership and you know for taking the deep plunge. Absolutely, and we definitely need to talk when we start getting around the. Yeah, I like specifics. More. Start asking so many tough questions. <laughs> Appreciate right, well, it. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you. Right, Star Selecta signing off here, Android Authority at the Chevy Tech event.